Go and get yourself some top quality Pro Max protein. Get yourself a gym membership. Get yourself a mountain bike. Get yourself some running shoes. Start pumping iron. Get a few fillet steaks. Make yourself look like the boss. Then buy a nice shirt. Get yourself some nice trousers. And when you look absolutely top of your game, get yourself down a bar on a Saturday night. Because believe me, there's a ton of women just as attractive, if not more than the girls we're talking about, who would absolutely love for a nice gentleman to take them out for a meal and buy them a cocktail. And that is money well spent. Mark, your advice is pretty old. It's been tested for many years. It doesn't work for half or maybe even three quarters of men. Because if you don't have the proper bone structure, you're not going to gain any noticeable muscle mass. It will be buried under your clothing, the way a champion rock climber is a very wiry, uh, hard-packed uh, guy. But you're not, you're not going to see any of that muscle when you're wearing a suit. I mean, the only thing that matters is your genetics. Yes, you have to work out, but you need the proper genes. You need the proper bone structure. You need broad shoulders. It doesn't matter how much time you spend in a gym, your shoulders aren't going to get any wider. And let's say uh, all men did pump iron and they all became chads, then you would still have two problems. Number one, the women would still go for the top 10 to 20 percent of all chads because they would be more scrutinizing. It's like, oh, he's not quite as tough a chad as this other one. They would, they would find some other system of scrutiny. So then the other chads would be out of luck. And then number two, we're living in a society where the strong, powerful man is no longer as attractive as he would have been in the past. This is not a hunter-gatherer uh, society. St a strong man is often seen these days as a threat by the women because this is a more masculine man he's more likely to stick up for himself and he could be like a, a physical threat to the woman I'm, I'm not saying he actually would be i don't believe that but he would have the impression of of being a threat this is a decadent stage in our civilization so what's actually happened is the beta male or or the metrosexual has risen to prominence and he's soft he's more effeminate he's the perfect pet for the woman he might not get laid that much but she's gonna be more likely to choose him as a partner because she can control him as hell by the dashboard light says if you really want a woman these days be doughy talk about your emotions look like a disappointing version of a man to men, I'm not not to women, but well, maybe from women too. It depends on how they look. But look, look like wow, that one kind of went. We got, it got, you know, it just it farted, and you you look doughy, and you're gonna be a faithful servant, a servant of the state, a servant of the women. Now, I like Ramsey Paul. I watch his videos very frequently. He's a funny guy. He seems very down to earth. Mark Collett, I've seen a few of his videos. I mean, something about his personality rubs me the wrong way. That's just my take. I'm thankful that these guys are promoting nationalism, but what I don't like about them is that they don't talk about female hypergamy because on dating sites and in general, in the bar scene, whatever, women are always going to go for the top 20% of men. 10%, maybe 20%. And when I say top 10 to 20 percent, you could break that down in terms of wealth or, you know, how, how much are they like a Chad? Uh, and it gets more complicated with the, the beta male question. So, you know, that that status is, is it's shifted. It's a bit more complicated, but we can all agree there is the status hierarchy. It, it functions in in different ways, in different places. And I'm talking from an urban perspective. I'm talking from a current perspective. Not the traditional way, but female nature has always been what it is. The conditions have changed. I actually did a, um, I actually did a, 
a YouTube video on this a long time ago, and it was called, I think it was called something like uh, Beta Males and the Girls That Exploit Them or something like that. And I was on Instagram, and, I, I'm, you know, I am a gamer. I am a gamer. I do enjoy my gaming. That's my sort of little bit of a... Uh, I do too. You know, escapism. Yeah. You know, escapism. Yeah. Yeah. So I once snapped a GameCube controller in half playing a Mario Kart Wii online. <laughs> Nothing is more frustrating than being hit by two blue shells on the line and going from first to last. I tell you, at that point, I realized I had to get my temper under control. I'll have to ask you this, Tina, you could chime in, but I've met multiple girls now that said that, especially in the right wing community, it's, it's not bad. But there's a lot of, I don't know what's happened, I don't want to sound old, but a lot of the younger guys, there's sort of a, a lack of social skills or how to talk to women. They're, they're really like autistic about it. And there's theories, it's because of porn, it's because of being always just on the internet. Uh, but they said, and these are really attractive girls, they said they don't get approached and they would love to be, and they would love to be. What? But these guys just don't do it. They don't know it's because they're always into porn, really too shy, but they would like to end up with a, a white guy. And a lot of these white guys, these uh, incel types, and I don't know all the communities, but they're like, oh, unless you're like Tom Brady and super rich and super handsome, a woman's not going to want anything to do with you anyway, so why bother? And it's just a really warped sense of view because that's not really the case. That's not really the case. That's not really the case. Ramsey Paul says he met some women who told him that men don't approach them, even though these same women wish that the men would approach them. Now, there's just a lot of problems with the assumptions he's making, the things he's taking for granted here. I mean, first of all, were these attractive women? And there are a lot of unattractive women out there, but okay, granted, these are attractive women. Well, if women say something is the case, obviously it must be true. Did it occur to Ramsey Paul that what women say they want and what they actually want are two different things? I'm not buying into this supposed female thirst for a male partner. No, the women are fine. They're more indifferent these days. It, there could even be chemical reasons for this as women are consuming different foods, different medicines, which can affect their appetite for sex. Whereas men, uh, well, we've been affected too. The testosterone has gone down, but certainly men still want sex. We still uh, going to go for it if the option is there, but it's really the women that aren't giving the green light here. They're giving a green light to this, the few men that they want, but they're not giving a green light to settle down early in a committed long-term relationship. Women are the ones in control in our society and especially on these dating sites. Men are the food items on these sites. Women peruse through the menu. The difference is the food items say, hey, eat me. And then they, they pick and choose like at a buffet. But they all tend to go for the top 10 to 20% of men. And of course, that, that might be defined differently in different places. But certainly in a social dating site, they're going to put you together, you know, similar geography, similar socioeconomic class. Some of these sites even uh, break you down by your income level. I mean, you can lie about your income, but still, you're going to be put in a similar socio-cultural segment, class. So then the, the hierarchy is going to be very clear there. They're going to respond to the top men only. Or if they respond to you, it may be playing with you. I mean, again, it, this whole idea of just having a conversation, just being able to exchange information with a woman, uh, she likes attention. So she's going to give attention to people on social media as well, even ap apart from these dating sites. It, it, you know, it's, it satisfies them and it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> they forget you. Now, when it comes to getting men to approach women, Ramsey Paul knows full well that with multiculturalism has come the disintegration of communities. And you need a community for a healthy flow. Life is more, I guess you could say, straightforward. So it's not so awkward to approach a woman when you are in a real community. This is why it's easier for Western men to meet 
and speak to foreign women as when they're in non-Western countries, not all non-Western countries, not in Muslim countries, but generally Latin America, Africa, Asia, they're okay coupling with a white male. It's not looked down upon. I mean, it might be looked down upon slightly. In, in some places, they're totally fine with it. It's a real community. And, of course, you have the, the boosted sexual marketplace value. That, of course, is the, the most important factor. But part of the factor is there's a real healthy community over there. Now, again, if you go to a big city like Tokyo, I, you know, sure, it's not going to be the same. But if you're going to countryside, the funny thing here is that we're dealing with nationalists who would prefer that white men marry white women. They're speaking to men to give them... You know, they're supposedly the best advice to, to get a woman. But we all know, I mean, most of us should know. Well, we're considering, you know, the 50% roughly of Western men who have zero contact or very limited contact with Western women. We're dealing with those, those men here. So if one of them is desperate for some relationship with a woman, what's the best advice you could give him? It wouldn't be what Mark... And Ramsey Paul is saying it would honestly be leave the country, go to China or some African country or some South American country or island, play your sexual marketplace value there because the odds are better. It's not going to help the white race grow, but you are going to be much more likely to find an attractive woman who is available. If you want the white men to stop going for Chinese women, then you need to call out the white women at home. The white women need to be called out. But the blue pill nationalists don't want to call out their princesses. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, it's got a lot to do with, uh, with the nature of the movement. That uh, Because uh, uh, in the end, uh, very outspoken, very red pill people a uh, sort of rare. I think uh, a lot of men might feel isolated already when they come to the movement and they cannot get rid of that uh, feeling. And of course, uh, there are all the other symptoms uh, that are very common to young people, not just nationalist men, but to all, uh, like insecurity, insecurity, insecurity. And of course, uh, a movement like this uh, attracts a lot of uh, intellectual types which includes people who are somewhere in the autism spectrum or have Asperger's, autism Asperger's, insecurity, isolated. To explain this deep problem as merely autism, Asperger's, and isolation leading to social awkwardness, fear of engaging socially, uh, lack of willpower, lack of the will to try. Uh, this is some small factor, but it's not the main cause. And what about the women? Women are just perfect. Nothing, you know, nothing has to do with, with women. It's all the men's fault. Uh, so I can understand that there are a lot of guys who are socially challenged and uh, uh, actually, my boyfriend is one of those people. <laughs> he is very socially challenged, and I was his online crush. <laughs> so uh, he wa he used to watch my videos and uh, think that it would be cool if I was really his girlfriend. And <laughs> uh, and he actually won in the end, but I don't think that happens too often. So my boyfriend, he used to watch my videos, and my boyfriend, he used to watch my videos, and. Uh, people really uh, shouldn't put their hopes in that. I completely agree with Mark that uh, you should uh, put your efforts in uh, improving yourself and... Uh... Are you kidding me? Let me get this straight. An awkward man follows Tina because she's an online personality as well. And I guess she just takes pity on him. Maybe she thinks she can control him well because if you're an awkward man and you're following someone, that kind of puts her on a naturally she's on a pedestal and the women like to be on the pedestal you know a lot of betas are naturally going to do that is this guy a beta because by the way he's also a middle easterner right if i remember correctly he's from jordan or some some something like that 
she says this is a bad example to follow and i agree but who is she to be talking about this subject her own example goes against what she's telling men and then she's supposedly a nationalist but she she hooks up with a, a non-european guy and what about ramsey paul when was the last time he went dating like some decades ago uh, getting over all these uh, mental blocks that you have, uh, these insecurities that keep, te keep telling you that uh, the women are not going to say yes if you ask them out or that you're going to make a fool of yourself. Uh, you simply need to get past all that and try. That's the only way to uh, get anywhere in this. The mental blocks, try, try, try. That's the only way. That's the only way. The only way. That's why you have to clean your room, tie up your shoelaces, try harder. It's your fault. Remember, it's always your fault, men. And what came to my mind about uh, this uh, subject and uh, Lauren Southern is that uh, I remember, I think it was maybe a year or two ago, that Lauren uh, sold uh, these uh, private chats to people, uh, like guys, and for, I don't remember what the sum was, but uh, for a bigger price, uh, you would get a dinner with Lauren Southern. And, and I was talking about that with some nationalist women. and. All of them were pretty appalled. That, that, that's basically prostitution. Like I can, I cannot imagine what it's like because uh, imagine some uh, uh, like a greasy creep actually buying that dinner, and then you have to sit there with him and him and. Nationalist women, give me a break! Isn't that an oxymoron? Lauren Southern has played the same game that Tina has played. Only she made the mistake of being caught in an embarrassing situation. For the most part, these so-called nationalist women are in it for the money and the attention. I don't know if Ramsey Paul specifically endorsed Lauren Southern, but he has communicated with her. He has expressed his support generally for female nationalist YouTubers. And now that... Miss Southern has been scandalized. I don't think Ramsey Paul has learned anything. It's funny that a young guy like Nick Fuentes, who's only like 20 years old, he's not going to be supporting these female nationalist YouTubers, but the boomer, or, you know, he's, he's almost a, a generation Xer, but he can't learn that lesson. For Ramsey Paul, oh, it's totally okay that women are in politics. Nothing could go wrong with that. All female nationalist YouTubers, they're all doing it by capitalizing on their looks. There's nothing conservative about them. They're not being responsible wives. What self-respecting husband would let his wife talk about politics online and be ogled by thousands of male eyes? That you would have to put a stop to it. It's okay if she wants to talk about gardening, or baking, but politics, nuh -uh. No, never pay for a girl's affections. I mean, that's just one thing to learn. Never, until, until you're in a relationship with them, you shouldn't be giving them hardly any money, probably not any. And again, if they're doing good work politically or you like the content they produce, that's fine. I don't mean to discriminate against women. Yeah, Ramsey Paul, but let's say a Chad is dating a woman and then he doesn't want to pay for the dinner? Is this going to go over well? I don't know. It's a little iffy. So you're always going to be paying for a woman's attention, for her care, for sex, whatever it is. You're going to be paying always. I understand you don't want to come across as desperate in the beginning by paying straight up for something. But you always have to pay. If you don't pay, she's going to lose respect for you. If a woman out earns a man in a marriage... That's a very bad sign. She's probably going to leave him. We have a lot of great women we've had on this show that I think you should support, and there's nothing wrong with that. Great women. We've had on this show that I think you should support, and there's nothing wrong with that. You should support. Great women. You should support. Great women. But if your only focus is to give the money and hope so like you, it actually backfires. Uh, women, when they see guys giving them money beforehand, it, you're kind of coming across as desperate. No woman wants to be with a guy that's desperate. Your thoughts, Mark? 
<laughs> I was just going to say, Tina's made me actually cry there. I was laughing so hard, a tear actually went down my cheek. This is so funny. This is, this is so funny. This is, this is so funny. This is, this is like the best birthday party for you ever, mate. Having such a great time. <laughs> the thing is, it was $250. You know, um, it was $250 for a 50... $250 a month for one 15-minute chat. I wow, mean, 15 minutes for $250. And it was just over... I wow. Mean, okay, now... Dollars. And it was just... I'm not going to be crude, but I bet you could get a very attractive girl to do something with you for a lot longer, for a lot less if you shop her <laughs> on the internet. You know? <laughs> but I'll tell guys how to get this. And I've, I've actually watched this. And it's what I call a asylum seeker dating. When I used to go to nightclubs, you would always see a group of sort of asylum seekers. You could always tell them because they'd have like, you know, the curly greased hair, they'd have a brown leather jacket, they'd have their Rockport shoes and their really dark blue jeans. And they'd sort of be milling around together with a drink. And what these guys would do, they would look for a group of girls. Then one of the asylum seekers would break off the pack and make a beeline, maybe for a hen party or some birds dancing around their handbags or a couple of drunk girls at the bar. And the asylum seeker would then start gyrating behind one of the group. And this would lead to one of two reactions. Now, there was the most common reaction, which was for her to turn around and be like, get lost and push him away. Or there would be the uncommon reaction, maybe one in every 50 or one in every 100 women would do this. They would turn around and start kissing him, you know, and he'd have scored. And what the asylum seeker would do would act without any shame whatsoever. So if one of the girls in the group pushed him away, he'd just move left or right to the next girl and keep doing it until he gyrated behind every girl in the group. And as the night went on, sure enough, he would reach the golden number of maybe trying this on with 50 to 100 women. And sooner or later, the odds would be in his favor. It was like buying a scratch card. Sooner or later, you're going to hit the jackpot. And it's just a numbers game. But the difference between these people and Western men is Western men have a conscience. They don't want to be humiliated. They, they have feelings. These guys didn't. These guys just didn't care. You know, they could have, they could have, you know, glasses of beer or wine thrown over them and they'd go and stand under the hand dryer for five minutes then they'd be back out on the dance floor doing it again. They just were completely shameless. But they always ended up going home with a girl. And that's how these men operate. And what I'm saying is, if you see a girl that you find attractive and you're dressed well and you look good, feel confident and just go and say hi. The very worst thing she can say is no. She's never going to remember you. You're never going to be on ITV evening news with the whole nation laughing at you. The worst thing that can happen is she says no. It doesn't matter though. You walk off and you try again. But the best thing that happens is that she says, oh, hi. Yeah, yeah, I'll go for a drink with you. And it's surprisingly easy. And all you have to do is keep telling yourself, it doesn't matter if she says no. And if you play that numbers game, and I'm guaranteeing you, you'll be far more successful than the asylum seeker. So you won't have to get it to 50 or 100. Sooner or later, somebody will say yes. Yes, Mark, you will have to get up to 50 or 100. You're going to have to do exactly what the asylum seekers do. If anything, you're going to have to try harder because in a city like Toronto, white men have less and less value in the eyes of white women. And it's the same with these dating sites. I've seen guys sign up for Plenty of Fish and they, they see a girl on there that they think, wow, she's perfect. And they write this beautiful long uh, piece to this girl. And then when she doesn't reply, she's crestfallen. Simply type out a short, catchy like, little intro in Word and spam it to 20 birds a day, every day for five days, and you'll have about three or four dates by the end of the week. Honestly, plenty of fish is like shooting fish in a barrel. You've just got to have the confidence to do it. And remember the old SAS motto, who dares wins. It's as simple as that. 
And I just have to ask, uh, Mark, what, do you like uh, like strategy games, board games? Real life games. I used to play Warhammer Forty K when I was in oh, my okay. team. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's, um, I, I'm happy to go to the tabletop if you want to. Uh, Jeans Watts Zeon uh, gives two dollars. Will white women be shamed for choosing white man? I don't think so. I, if you look at the statistic of all the interracial uh, the pairings, white women are actually the least likely to do so of any other races, including white men. So I think white women get a uh, bad reputation for that. Yeah, it does happen, but I don't think, I think most white women actually do prefer white men. They keep asserting that white women really prefer white men. It's almost like wishful thinking. They, they just want it to be true so bad. And I think, yeah, in optimal conditions, they probably do prefer white men, but we are not living in optimal, normal conditions. Free Thinker Silver, Canadian $10. Um, uh, using plenty of fish or other dating sites to get women is humiliating and doesn't work. Otherwise, incel and men go in their own way when it exists. <clears throat> Real oh, it does work. It, it's so easy. Believe and, me, uh, he goes, uh, let me just, because he sounds like real conservatives take women's, take away women's rights, then come uh, white babies. Mark, what do you take about this? And I won't say this element that says that women, uh, it's almost like a hostility towards women. We see some in the, in the right thinking is sort of like an overreaction. And what I see a lot of these guys, what happens is they idealize women because they've never been around women much and they think they're like these Disney princesses. And then when the woman doesn't live to that standard, they get really bitter and they're just like, oh, they're just all whores and they're just horrible and we need to abuse them. Ramsey Paul gave a very distorted characterization of the super chat which I sent him. All I said was, quote, plenty of fish and other dating sites are humiliating and don't work. Otherwise, incel and MGTOW would not exist. Real conservatives take away women's rights, then come white babies. In response, Ramsey Paul says this is, quote, almost like hostility, end quote. Well, what do you mean, Ramsey Paul? How is it hostile to women if it's based on truth? And it's true, dating sites do not work. They only work for a small segment of men. And while a relatively small number of men consciously use the term MGTOW or incel to describe themselves, in, in reality, a very large number of men effectively live the life of an incel or a MGTOW or whatever term you want to use to describe being single. But for me to point these things out is, in Ramsey Paul's words, quote, sort of like an overreaction. He implies I must be someone who idealizes women, thinking that they're a Disney princess, and when I realize that they're not, I call all women whores. He even suggests that I think we need to abuse women. What Ramsey Paul is doing is called psychologizing, which is a form of ad hominem attack. It's not an argument. He's inferring extreme things about my psychological character while avoiding the actual issue. Have I ever called women whores in any of my videos? True, when I was discussing the hashtag MeToo movement, I said most women are sluts, and that's probably the spiciest language I've ever used uh, to describe women. I mean, routinely I refer to women as children, but that's true, and that's not very spicy to call them, you know, close to children. I mean, that's just reflecting the actual uh, reality. <laughs> but for Ramsey Paul, only a twisted man could possibly speak of women this way, so he has to psychologize me for the rest of his listeners. And that's very disappointing that he does that, because you know who else psychologizes people that they disagree with? The left. Very disappointing to see Ramsey Paul uh, do this, but not all that surprising. I'm trying to tell Ramsey Paul the honest truth, which is that dating sites don't work for the majority of men. And I don't just make the claim, I back it up by pointing to the existence of the MGTOW and incel community. 
which exist for different reasons, but one of the main, one of the large reasons that these communities exist is that it's too difficult to find a female partner these days unless you want to sacrifice so much of your dignity. The odds against the average man have increased. But no, for Ramsey Paul, these men who can't find a partner and who have withdrawn from women must be autistic. Well, listen, Ramsey Paul, I, I know you're a gamer and you seem to have experience with a lot of gamers who happen to be autistic. I have news for you. We're not all like that. A lot of us are fairly well socialized. We don't have these psychological problems that you're trying to infer. And I mention another truth. Taking away women's rights is the only way to fix the problem. And let's remember, feminism and women's rights are the same thing. And again, I don't just make the claim, I back it up by saying that real conservatives do that. We take away women's, or we, we never give women such rights in the first place. Because that's history. That's what we've done for, you know, most of Western history. For over a thousand years. Women didn't have voting rights. Women have, didn't have much participation in politics. Women had to obey their husbands, like it says in the Bible. Yes, there were exceptions here and there, but this was the general rule, and it was a good thing. Women didn't gain substantial rights until the 1920s, very recently. What kind of a clown world is this where Ramsey Paul, who's supposed to be a conservative, doesn't acknowledge that women's empowerment has been one of the main means to derail our civilization by aborting babies and welcoming migrants. Who do you think the majority of voters are? Women. Who do you think are fast becoming the majority of politicians? Women. This is not a case of men being angry and saying, I'm so angry because I can't get women. Let's get back at them however I can. I mean, sure, those men are very small. There is the red pill rage. But no, this issue of online dating is directly related and connected and dependent upon women's freedoms. When you decrease women's freedoms, they will naturally seek a man to provide for them. And right now, they simply don't need a man. Not a real man, anyways. They can rely on the government. It gives them everything they need. It's not going to work out in the long term, but women don't think in the long term like that. Unfortunately, we don't get any response to these pressing issues from Mark Collett or Ramsey Paul. All we get is psychologizing, projecting that we are the bitter ones, when it's they who are the bitter ones. My super chat brought out a bitter tone in Ramsey Paul. I realize it's a super chat and they don't have to respond to everything, but you know they're not going to respond to these issues anyways. Have you seen that phenomenon with some of these? I have. It, it, it's really bad. It's ridiculous. And, and some men get so bitter. And I'll tell you, the reason I actually suggest sites like um, Plenty of Fish um, is because it's an easy way to whittle down the kind of women you don't want to be with. When you meet a woman in a club, um, if clubs work for you, great. If, you know, if uh, going out and meeting women at a bar works for you, wonderful. But I wasn't the kind of person who super enjoyed going to bars or clubs. It wasn't really my thing. I'm more of a guy that likes to talk to people and build up a bit of a rapport. And I found it very easy just to look through profiles of women who were looking for long-term or serious relationships, enjoyed the same things as me, mountain biking, running, gym, that kind of thing, sending them a message. I used to get a lot of replies. I'd take people out for dinner. This is assuming that what women write in their online profiles is accurate. So Mark meets women who like exercising and the outdoors. This suggests that they're going to be fit which puts a premium on them given how obese our society is. These fit women know that they're worth more, so it's going to be harder for the average man to get them. So I'm a little incredulous with what Mark's saying about how easy it is for him to meet these women. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Mark takes out 
fit women for dinner. Do you think he splits the bill? Am I wrong to assume that he pays for the whole thing? Because after all, that would be the conservative thing to do. That would also contradict Ramsey Paul's advice not to give women any money until you're in an established relationship with them. Now, granted, paying for a meal isn't the same thing as giving money, but it's close enough. You would generally find a lot of women on their profile saying, I am looking for a traditional man. I am not looking to go clubbing. I do not drink. I don't like that kind of lifestyle. I don't want a guy who smokes weed. And if you see that on people's profiles, you know you've got something in common with them. But when you meet people in bars or clubs, you tend to have a lot of small talk, not really get to know them. And it can take a while to uh, really figure someone out. Whereas with these profiles, I found it very easy to sort of just go through and say, well, oh, well, she's a smoker. She's off the list. She, she indulges in recreational drug use. She's off the list. She doesn't believe in physical fitness and says her favorite thing's lying in bed on Sunday morning with a bar of galaxy chocolate. I go for a walk Sunday morning. I like a girl to go with me. She's off the list. And I found that quite easy. Women saying that they're looking for a traditional man. I'm assuming these women are in their 30s because Mark is. And have these women been living a traditional lifestyle during their 20s? Surely they haven't had sex with multiple men uh, during those years. I'm just exercising some healthy skepticism. A real traditional man is supposed to take charge and lead women. But when these women say they want a traditional man, they may sincerely mean that you don't smoke weed or you don't party. In other words, you don't have too much fun for yourself. But what they really mean, above all, is a man who's going to pay for everything and give her children. Then Mark describes going through women's online profiles and being picky with the women he encounters, excluding those such as smokers. Do you really think the average man can afford to be that picky? It's the women who can be picky, not the men. After all, by his own admission, he's contacting as many women as possible. How does that jive with also being picky? The average man is looking for a woman who's attractive enough. Can he really exclude her just because she likes to smoke cigarettes? That's an afterthought. I'll meet her. We'll get in a relationship. I'll try to talk her out of it because you don't want her to be smoking if you if she's having kids. But for goodness sakes, he's not in the position to make that call. It's just way too good to be true. I can appreciate that Mark is being so optimistic because he wants to encourage you. But this is only going to lead to disappointment. But I think men who write everything off, you see what you have is the man who he says, I don't go to clubs, they're degenerate. I don't go to bars, oh, that's degenerate. I don't go on the uh, Plenty of Fish because that's just for whores. Oh, I don't go on Tinder, that's just for thoughts. And really what he's doing is saying, I don't do anything. I'm going to sit at home moaning that I've not got a girlfriend, but I will make absolutely no moves whatsoever to remedy that situation in any way other than leaving increasingly angry comments on females' videos on Facebook or on, you know, YouTube. And, and that's to me, is a little bit, um, little bit crazy. More projection. Just because you're not going into these social spaces to try and get women doesn't mean that, A, you're going to be a moaner and B, that you're not doing anything at all in your life. I hate to keep repeating this, but just because some men are bitter at women doesn't mean we all are. Most of us are just trying to get on with our lives. And uh, one thing that I've noticed is that um, <clears throat> usually the guys who have a lot of women in their circles, they have female friends or they uh, meet a lot uh, of their uh, friends, girlfriends, or they have sisters. Those guys usually have the easiest time getting uh, yeah, women to date them because uh, they know how to talk to women. They are not alienated from them. So I don't. So when when we are talking about these incel types that are completely without experience uh, about women and uh, maybe have these bizarre illusions of what women are like, uh, be they negative or positive, uh, but uh, uh, just uh, hanging around with women 
uh, is actually really beneficial because just uh, hanging around with women uh, is actually really beneficial because uh, you then uh, learn how to talk to women like normal people. You don't put them on a pedestal anymore. So if you have a woman as a friend, uh, then you have easier time approaching women in the romantic sense. So that's something I think people should keep in mind that you should interact with women even if it's not a romantic relationship and even if it's a romantic relationship you're um, after in the end. Learn how to talk to women like normal people. Just uh, hanging around with women. Hanging around with women. Normal people. Learn, 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 learn. Oh, it's completely true. Tina says that hanging around with women is beneficial because then you will learn how to approach women romantically. There are several things wrong with this view. Firstly, what normal, healthy man wants to surround himself with estrogen? I admit to doing this when I was younger, but of course I get become wiser. I mean, there's so many reasons. You're not going to have very funny or deep conversations with women. They're going to be shallow. That's besides the point anyways. Tina speaks of normal women several times. But what would you consider to be normal women these days? I don't think they exist anymore. They may have been normal in the past. Or they are no longer. The second problem is that when you are social with women, you are in the friend zone. They see you as their cuck friend. Always there for emotional support. For them, not for you. And yeah, that may boost your ability to chat with women, but it's more likely that you were already a likable enough character to begin with, and therefore they chose you as a friend to hang out with, not the other way around. And of course, the main point, the most important point, is that if you are in the friend zone, you aren't going to succeed romantically with any of these women in that social group. You aren't going to get anything in the end, romantically or sexually. You are already taken out of their options because they see you as their emotional Kleenex. People are going to say, you're so cynical, you're so bitter. I'm, I'm really not. It's actually quite funny. If there's any bitterness that you're seeing in me speaking here, it's not it's not directed towards women and well maybe towards Tina because she's participating in this narrative, but it's 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 directed towards the so-called conservatives, Mark Collett and Ramsey Paul. The other main problem with what Tina's doing is she's following Ramsey Paul's lead in psychologizing me unfairly. She thinks I'm socially awkward and I have very little experience with women. As you may know, that's not true. I don't need to repeat all of my stories about women for you here, but I have had enough experience with women. I have lived with women. I have traveled and lived with women overseas. Uh, it just, I have had enough experience with women. Yes, I was in a relationship before. But Tina has this bizarre idea that I idolize women and therefore I cannot treat them as normal persons. It's as though she's Sigmund Freud. 40 years from now, we're going to look back on the psychologizing of red pill males by the blue pill opposition as a discredited discourse, a fabulous and surreal discourse, just as we look back on Freud's ideas as being wrong and discredited. The truth is that I got to know how women are and I chose not to bother with them, not for the time being anyways. I learned that your brothers and your own future ought to come before women. Sigmund Freud had an agenda Make sure the white male stays a compliant slave. With Mark, Tina, and Ramsey Paul, the agenda is unfortunately the same. Get back in line. Don't point out the obvious. Keep trying. Celebrate women. If you're a mother or a father and you've got a young son, don't, don't shy away from introducing him to young girls at a, at, a, at a young age, you know, make sure he plays with people of both genders because 
if boys only play with boys, if boys only sit with boys, girls can become um, almost like this sort of strange alien species. I think that if you are one of those guys that's kept away um, from girls, then kept away from ladies, then kept away from women, it becomes more of a mental state where you believe it's impossible to talk to them as if they're almost like an alien species. In some ways, it's actually easy because there's so many women, so many men scared of talking to women that if you actually have got the balls, if you actually do go and talk to them, a lot of these attractive women are starved of genuine conversation and insightful chit-chat because the only guys that talk to them are either meatheads who are dead confident but have got nothing to say, but most guys are either at home trapped in a little bubble or when they come out of their bubble too scared to talk to them. Basically, it's about seizing the day. It's about taking your opportunities and realising there isn't some mystical barrier between men and women. Go out, do your duty. Do what's best for your race and your people. He's basically advocating being a pickup artist or a PUA. But then he doesn't have a very developed strategy like the PUAs have. Even the PUAs have more to say than what Mark says. But the funny thing is that PUA has largely failed. I mean, what, what year is Mark living in? Is this 2006, Mark? It's 2019, you know. You know that most PUAs have dropped the label and they've moved on to something. A lot of them uh, flirted with the MGTOW thing or they're like Roosh. Now he's, Roosh is now uh, writing books for women to find a male partner. The importance of being comfortable talking to girls is being overemphasized here. Anyone who is socialized properly as a child is going to be smooth enough to engage in conversation with women, with men, with co-workers, with bosses, with strangers, etc. It's like saying you better not be shy if you want to succeed in life. It's so obvious that it doesn't even need to be said. The problem is that while overcoming awkwardness is necessary in building any relationship, romantic or otherwise, it is not enough. That is the problem. It's like saying if you want to make a good impression, you should not be missing your front teeth. Yeah, that's going to help you make a good impression. But is that the recipe for success? No, of course not. I get the sense that we are being spoken to as if we are all 15-year-old boys. I find it belittling and condescending. Yes, I get it. There's a lot of grown men these days who are like 15-year-olds. And yes, there's a lot of autistic men out there. But they ought to speak to us as men. They ought to address us as though we are not stupid or damaged. That would show respect. They don't really want to hear your story. They seem to think that normal, healthy men wouldn't possibly give up on women. For Mark and Tina, and I guess Ramsey Paul too, only men with psychological issues could possibly do such a thing. Do we hear a single mention of problems with women these days? How fat they are? How narcissistic they are? I could go on. I'm not trying to paint all women with that brush. But it's interesting that they are only too willing to drag the failures and problems of men out into the open while leaving women untouched. Sure, they mention Lauren Southern taking advantage of men online. Are they going to follow that trail and ponder what it has to say about female nature? No, of course not. And uh, we got Jez uh, for $10. Uh, Mark, you found it very easy to get replies because you have perfect profile pics, which means everything on online dating. Just saying, most guys won't have it as easy. So this guy's theory is, well, it's easy for you because you're a very handsome and charming man, and most men are not like that. So I guess... I'm neither handsome nor charming. I've just got that. I've just got that. Uh, that I've just got that cheeky grin. Look, Jez... 
I, that's, that's, like, that's the common that's the common thing that a lot of guys rationalize is the Tom Brady thing. It's like, well, unless you're very super handsome, like a male model, and you're super rich, there's no hope anyway. And it's just so crazy if you just do the math, right? Having good looks is overrated. You don't want to be ugly, but I'm pretty skeptical that being handsome is such a game changer. You want to be a Chad with lots of money. Or if you're playing the strategy of getting a girl by being a beta, it's your softness and your obedience which is going to count the most. When Ramsey Paul says, just do the math, I assume he's referring to the fact that there's roughly a 50-50 divide between men and women in society. So therefore, it should be easy for men and women to partner up, right? <laughs> Wrong. These days, most women aren't interested in finding a partner until their 30s, when their biological clock starts to tick and they notice it. And by that time, they're going to be far less attractive than they were in their early 20s. Ramsey Paul mocks the idea that you have to be super rich to get a girl. What a stupid thing to mock. What could be more evident to us from history than that? You do need to have wealth to get a girl. Do I need to say this? Maybe it's not such a huge priority, but it is a significant factor that any woman is going to consider. Do you think she wants to consider you as a husband if you don't have enough wealth? If you, if you don't at least have a steady stream of income, let's at least say steady income stream. You paid the down payment for the condo. You will be paying off the condo or the house. You will be able to take on most of the burden financially. Of course, that's, that's changed with feminism. Women are now often out earning men. And you know what happens in those situations? They look down on men. They see them as more worthless and they leave them often. Here's my, here's my advice on pictures, okay? Because Jez, Jez hunted down my old Plenty of Fish profile and he had a look at the pictures. And it's really easy to take two or three very good pictures. The first one has to be you dressed up smart, casual, like you're at a wedding, you're at a wine bar, you know, you, you're in your, you're either in a suit, you're in a nice shirt with a jacket. That's your professional picture. The second picture is you doing something more casual. And the third picture, and you can have two, you can have two of these if you want, have to be action shots. They have to be you doing something that looks exciting. So you're telling a picture, you're telling a story with your pictures. So you're saying, look, I can be the professional guy. I can be the lighthearted guy. And one of, one of the pictures of me was me crawling out of a pit of mud doing an assault course. Another one was me on the, a mountain bike um, going through, you know, the forests in uh, Dolby Forest. And those pictures said a story. This guy's a professional. But he's also quite hardy and he likes doing some pretty out there things. And he also likes being out in nature and mountain biking. And my profile was very clear. I'm a traditional guy looking for a traditional woman, looking for a long term relationship. I don't drink. I don't go out partying, but I want quality time. I like being the guy who goes out, spends some time in the woods, spends some time out in nature, nice meals, nice nights in weekend by the coast boom you know it's simple but you can't just get your mobile phone and go oh selfie and bang it on a dating site that doesn't work they have to be shots that make you look like you're an interesting guy that tell a story so people know that you aren't just um a, a, a random weirdo who took a selfie and also the more effort you put into your profile says you care about yourself, says there's something to you. I knew a guy who got very depressed, um, who didn't think he'd get a girlfriend. He'd been really, really out of the game with women for quite some time. And he went, and I think he paid 50 quid to a professional photographer. The photographer said, bring a nice suit and shirt, posed him. Bam, he's married with kids now and he's as happy as can be. The advice about pictures may have some validity, but it sounds so stupid. What kind of a moron 
is going to take a selfie the way Mark described it. Like, oh, selfie. It's like, I mean, are you kidding me? Like, any sane man is going to take a decent selfie. Well-planned professional photos may boost your chances a little bit, but it's not going to be the decisive factor the way Mark is making it up to be. Mark says that these photos will tell a story about yourself. Yeah, maybe. More like you're shamelessly creating an illusion around yourself. It's fake. It's silly. And how did it work out for you, Mark? What kinds of women did you meet? How did it go with them? The only thing we've heard so far is that he took some women out for dinner, and we can assume he footed the bill for that. And did it succeed? Are you in a long-term relationship now, Mark? Are you married? With kids? Strange, he makes no mention of that during this podcast. I'm not saying he isn't in a relationship. I'm just saying it's very strange he doesn't go into the specifics when it would be very relevant to do so. Don't message women, hi. At least explain a little why you are messaging them, who you are, and uh, why, why you chose that person to message you, what, what is your business. When it comes to women who are very attractive, they are used to guys starting with some sort of uh, compliment on their looks. And it uh, might be uh, cute to get compliments from time to time, but if every guy always starts with a compliment, uh, you start getting bored with them and you start feeling that all these people seeing you is your looks. So if you approach a woman like that uh, uh, and uh, uh, ignore her looks and uh, simply approach her as a person, uh, it might be actually very refreshing for the woman and she might then uh, uh, actually, uh, or, or that it might raise raise her interest in you because you are approaching her as a uh, as an actual whole human being instead of just uh, uh, some pretty thing. Yeah, merely saying hi is dumb. Tina also says that all men see in women is their looks. But to be fair, isn't this normal and healthy when you're looking at an online profile? It may be stupid to start off complimenting a woman about her looks, but we all know that this is the most important factor. And I don't like constantly hearing about how you have to approach women as normal people, as so-called whole humans. That smells like feminism to me. Feminism says that the man and woman are a team, a partnership. Feminism says women are whole because men are whole and women are supposedly the same as men. It's a bunch of hogwash. Women are not whole. They are missing a lot of stuff which a man has. It's debatable that women have something that men don't have other than obviously the reproductive equipment. Also, another tip, when you address a woman in a message, on a social network, if it's a dating site, if you want to really increase your chances with your copy-paste message, have one line in the copy-paste message that you can change for each woman. So if the woman says something, if a woman's got a picture of herself in Milan and you went to Milan last year, say, oh, copy-paste message, but then say, oh, I saw your picture in Milan. It's a really beautiful place. Did you go here? I went the other week and it was beautiful. You know, and that way, it looks like you've got something to talk about. I think it was actually a slip on Mark's part to admit the copying and pasting because it doesn't make online dating look so great. I think Mark knows it's about using an illusion to manipulate women's emotions. This is basically what he's saying, though he doesn't put it in those words. Notice that we've been told constantly throughout this discussion that men have to overcome their awkwardness in order to get women, but they also have to create these awkward illusions to get the women. And of course, that's my own spin, but effectively, this is an awkward illusion you're creating. It's silly. It's not your real self. They tell us to approach women as if they are normal people, but then we have to also be very careful in how we approach women. Contradictions abound.
Hasta luego, amigos.